We'll get started here in about two minutes. Two minute warning, we'll get started here. If you're trying to find a seat, others that have seats open next to you, go ahead and try to scooch in a little bit to make sure all the seats are taken care of. We'll get started here in just a couple of minutes. There's a lot of open seats up there in this mezzanine, so Southwest Mezzanine, if y'all can scooch in, Southwest teenagers and workers, scooch in, fill up the middle, and then work your way out. Southwest teens, scooch into the middle, and then work your way out, that way the other ends can be open for people to come in. Good evening and welcome to Youth Conference. We're really glad that you're here and looking forward to what God's going to do. I'm Jason Gaddis, pastor at Southwest Baptist Church, and uh, we're just glad to welcome you here. And uh, let's just get a few things out of the way. Number one, it's hot outside. Unless you're from like Arizona, now this is like a cool front here for you. You know, summer in 116 degree temperatures, and so this is like a relief. And uh, number two, there's a lot of people here. This is our record number for the youth conference. So we're very excited about that. Thank you for, yeah, absolutely. That's something to rejoice in, sure. That is indeed. <clears throat> so thank you up front for being patient and working through, but it looks like everything's going all right. We're gonna go to youth conference. So how about we stay in? Let's start with a word of prayer. I'd like to ask Brother Calabrese, he's famous, uh, he came up here and everybody gave him a big round of applause, so why don't you come open us in prayer, pray for the conference that God might bless, and then here's what let's do, let's sing out here tonight to the Lord and really give it our all as we do, Brother Aaron's going to come and lead us, Brother Aaron Mass works with the music here, I think this is your first time to youth conference, let me see, I know um, your first time, wow, that is fantastic, great, 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 very good, well, we're excited about that, uh, 30... 33 years ago, God changed my life in a youth conference, so I'm a firm believer in what God can do in this week. So, Brother Andrew, if you'd come and lead us in a word of prayer. Go ahead, Dad. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to be here. Thank you for all the folks that put in the effort and the planning, the preparation, I mean, in the execution of making this happen. Lord, we're so thankful to have a week like this, and we just ask your blessing on it. May you work through our preachers this week. And I pray that um, you do it only you can do through the preached word of God. And I pray that all of us, young people and adults alike, would have hearts that are ready to hear and not just hear, but listen and take heed. Lord, help us not just to be hearers of the word, but to be doers of the word. I pray that this week would strengthen uh, youth groups and uh, bring unity. And, and Lord, that you would just do wonderful things through this week. Thank you so much for who you are. We give you all the praise and glory. That's due your name. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Stay standing. If you have a youth con book, go to page 30. I'll give you just a moment to pull that out, borrow a friend, make a friend. Just find a book. Go to page 30. We're going to begin tonight with Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. If you know those words, let's sing it out on that first verse. We'll sing all four verses tonight. Page 30 in your book. Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Are you ready? Let's sing it out now. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Yeah. 
That's amazing. Can we go back and end on that first verse? I'm pretty sure you have the first verse. Let's do that. Great job making up those words. That was wonderful. First verse, stand up, ye soldiers of the cross. Stand up. That's a strong one to end on. Good job with that. Number 23, go to page 23. He lives, he lives, he lives within my heart. I love how this one begins. I serve a risen Savior. Praise the Lord for that truth. He's listening tonight to our praise. Will you sing it out? Page 23 in your books. Let's lift it up on the first. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world. great start tonight. You may be seated. I'd like to ask for Glory Mountain to come and sing at this time. They needed a little bit of extra time to make it up here. I know that you saw that. That's okay. They're going to sing at this time. You listen. I think you'll be blessed by their song.
There was a lot to be done in the work of God's son. So much at stake, he wouldn't make one mistake. The duty assigned was to rescue mankind. He had to do all things well. He would not fail. He left no stone unturned. He finished everything. No uncompleted task in the journal of the king. They tried to stop his work. They even put him in a grave. He left no stone unturned. But he left one road. Savior of the soul, no pillow for the head, for the one who raised the dead, to heal lame and blind, require over time, he worked till the end, to be the sinner's friend, he left no stone unturned, he finished everything. journal of the king. They tried to stop his work. They even put him in a grave. He left no stone unturned, but he left one rolled away. From the manger to the mission, from the cross to the grave. Stone unturned, he finished everything. No uncompleted task in the journal of the king. They tried to stop his work, they even put him in a grave. He left no stone unturned, but he left one rolled away. Rolled away. Sure is a blessing, the truth of that. Thank you, man, very much. At this time, we've asked Logan Yoder, he's a third-year pastoral major, to come and give a brief testimony about how the Lord has worked in his life. Pray that this is a help. There's a lot of decisions facing you in the coming weeks, months, and years, and we know this is such a critical time for teens and where you are in your life. So we uh, have asked a couple of our students to come and just share a testimony about how the Lord has led and what he's done in their life. And Logan, you come and give us a testimony at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Mast, and the opportunity that I have just to give a testimony. And uh, I started coming to YouthCon in 2018, and uh, it was a good time the first time, and it's still a good time this time. So uh, have a good time, and this is a, just, just a special place in my heart uh, here at YouthCon. Uh, I have a question before I start. Where are my planners at? All my planners, raise your hand. The planner people, planner people. Are you, yeah, a few, we're teenagers, so I think that's who we're dealing with. Spontaneous people, the spontaneous people. There are my people right there. That's it right there. Um, so i would talk a little bit about plans, just give you my testimony. Um, I was uh, raised in church and, and uh, raised in a godly home, and I'm very thankful for that. My dad's here and very glad to uh, see him here and be here with him. Uh, but I, uh, I, I think of plans and I think just of my life in general. And, and while I was in high school, I decided that I wanted to pursue a degree uh, and go to college and make something of myself a little bit, you could say. Um, and so I wanted to do, be a doctor. I wanted to go to school and be a chiropractor, go to get my doctor's of chiropractic degree. And uh, so I kind of did that. And then a little bit uh, while I was in high school, graduated, and uh, the Lord kind of was laying on my heart to come to Bible college just for a year. My, my brother had come. And uh, so it was kind of evident in my life a little bit. My dad always encouraged me, maybe give, my, get, give the Lord a year of your life to Bible college. And so I did that. I, 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 the Lord laid it on my heart. And I really just decided I would go. 
and uh, surrendered that to him. And uh, as I came to school here, I just knew the Lord, this is where he wanted me. And uh, I, I had a great time, really plugged in. And uh, I, I, while I was here, uh, if you would have asked me, uh, is this what the Lord would have for your life, Logan? If, is, is this what the Lord would have for you? Is, are you following his plan? I would have said yes. You know, I, I want to finish this year here and go and pursue the degree in chiropractic, and that would have been it. And uh, I felt like that was where the Lord was leading me. Um, but while I was at school, uh, plans change. Amen. The, the, the little saying of uh, you want to make the Lord laugh, tell him your plans. Uh, so I, I uh, had, had these plans, and I, again, I, I would say that I was following the Lord in them. And uh, while I was here, the Lord really opened my eyes about some things. Uh, but while I was here, I plugged in. I mean, I really just plugged in. I'd encourage you to do the same in your youth group, in your church. Just plug in as much as you can and, and really just ask your youth pastors everything I can do. Ask your pastor the same thing. Just but get plugged in. And so while I was here, I did and tried to make the most of, of uh, what I could while I was here. And uh, while I was here, the Lord showed me some things. And uh, one thing that he really showed me is that uh, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And uh, I, the school really has, has uh, highlight weeks, and people come in and highlight different portions of the country. And, and uh, that really spoke to me, and the Lord really laid a burden on my heart for, uh, for the harvest and the fact that there are very few laborers. And uh, so it began as a burden, and, and uh, while he showed me that, I, I decided that, um, excuse me, right, o- right over here, about where you're sitting there, sir, with the glasses, um, that was where I decided that I would give my life to the Lord and surrender full-time ministry. Um, Church Planners Conference in 2021, I'm sorry, 22, last year. And uh, I really just gave the Lord my life there and said, anything you want with me, Lord, I'll give it to you. And uh, so I surrendered there and, and really, there's a song that we've sang all summer as Glory Bound and we're, we're traveling and we sing, and it's called He'll Pilot Me. And uh, the song really began to, spoke, to, to speak to me and uh, the first verse says, although I cannot see the way or life's tempestuous sea, I know that Jesus is my friend and that he'll pilot me. And uh, if, if, you're, if Jesus is your friend and you have that relationship with him, he'll pilot you and he'll, he'll guide you in the way that you ought to go. And uh, the Lord really showed me that. And uh, that's kind of something that I would say ties into my testimony in, in a way that, that if you give your life to the Lord and you're, you are, have a relationship with him and he's your friend, he'll pilot you. And there's not much you have to worry about after that. And I look back now and, and the things that I was going to do as, you know, a, a doctor and go to college for some more things and maybe make some money. Uh, and those things, are not, they don't interest me as much as they did. And uh, the Lord really just laid this on my heart and, and he's really just led me in this way and I'm very thankful. And so uh, that's my encouragement to you that, that you'd give your life to the Lord. Maybe at this conference, maybe you already have, uh, but that you'd continue that. And uh, while, you're, while you're here, while you're at church, while you're in your youth group, just to plug in and to, and to let the Lord pilot your life and uh, give him uh, your all. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Logan. Let's stand one more time, if you would. Join us in your booklets, number 25. Find page 25. You know this song, How Great Thou Art. Let's sing to him tonight. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder. Sing it out on this first verse with us now. Oh, Lord, my God, when I
is great singing. You may be seated one more time. We're going to have the Assurance Trio come and sing a song entitled, When He Spoke. a gardener when she met him on the road she had gone to see the tomb where Jesus lay but when she heard the stranger speak Mary I'm the one you seek she ran to the disciples through her tears they heard her say when he spoke to me I knew it was the same I walked without him, living only for myself, but that only led to pain and misery. Then in my heart I heard him say, child, there is a better way. So I knelt down at his feet, felt his mercy cover me. When he spoke to me, I knew it was the Savior. Well, let me, let me just say tonight, that's our desire that God would use this conference to speak to your heart. And he speaks to you through his word. And uh, so, young person, uh, you know, I don't know tonight how many here know him as their Savior. And those who don't, we're praying for those that don't because you can know him as your Savior. And we're praying for you that way. And uh, maybe others of you making some major life decisions right here, you need the word of God in your life. Convinced of that. So I'm thankful we have uh, two men of God that are here with us this week. Brother Wayne Hardy is going to be our first preacher, Brother Jason Jett. And uh, so it's a real blessing. This is the first time that they've preached in a meeting uh, together like this. So I'm excited about that. Brother Jason served as assistant pastor, Brother Wayne, for many, many years. And uh, so we'll get to hear from both of them in the course of the week. Uh, both of them are good friends. I'm thankful for them. Um, you need people that will challenge you along the way and just be a good friend. And that's exactly what Brother Wayne uh, and Brother Jason both have been in my life. Let me, let me help everyone just make sure. I know that many of you have known Brother Wayne Hardy for a lot of years, um, and, uh, but I wanna make sure that everyone does. So he was, he was born and, um, in South Carolina. His mom and dad, uh, faithful servants of the Lord, Brother Dave, Miss Grace Hardy, just uh, godly people. And uh, they've had an impact on many people in this auditorium here tonight, for sure. I'm thankful for them. But Wayne trusted Christ as his Savior at age four. And I'm, I'm thankful the gospel is so simple that a child can understand that they're a sinner and trust him at an early age. Now, I wanted to mention that because some of you may be trusting him at an early age and you've struggled with that. And I, I don't know Brother Wayne's full testimony there, but, but you, you can know him at an early age. And, thankful to God for that. 
Well, he, he went on, and I'll, I'll just um, get to some of the, the main points here. In 1983, he became the music director at Bible Baptist Church in Stillwater, Oklahoma, where he pastors now. In fact, that church is here. And then in 1984, he married uh, Miss Lisa. So that'll be 40 years next year. Is that right? 40 years. Miss Lisa's here. Let's welcome Miss Lisa here tonight as well. Thank you for that. So then they, they served in Stillwater together, and then he went to uh, Baptist Bible College in Springfield. And in 1999, I uh, went back to Stillwater and pastor as serving there as pastor. Three children, Daniel, Samuel, and Emily, we're thankful for them. They've come through Heartland and, and here tonight, I think, and uh, sure, sure glad about that. And uh, God, I think, gives each generation uh, some men that can think clearly by looking in his word and sharing some things. And it's God who gifts individuals to communicate. And, and in my estimation, God's gifted Brother Wayne to think clearly and to help to pass it on to us. We get the benefit of that. And uh, our theme this year um, here, as you see it in Psalm 33 and verse 8, you know, to let stand in awe of him and let the inhabitants of the earth fear the Lord. You know, fear of God is missing in our society. The fear of God, the reverence, the respect of God. And so it's been quite a joy at Southwest uh, to emphasize the fact that God created the heavens and the earth. And I, I know that many of you know that tonight, but there's a lot of voices in the world uh, today, but you need to know from the word of God that you are not a product of chance or an evolutionary process, but that you, listen, young men, young ladies, ladies and gentlemen, you are fearfully and wonderfully made by a wonderful creator. And I hope you get to spend some time in his creation, you know, just seeing his handiwork. And, and, uh, but you, you yourself, you're created by him. And so as, as I prayed about this year's speakers and thought about even the theme, and, and in many ways this had already been lined up for Brother Wayne and Brother Jason to preach, but I, I'm doing something a little bit different with Brother Wayne, and I asked him, you know, do you want me to mention this or not? Because I, I really want these men just to have liberty to preach whatever God puts on their heart. That, that is our sincere desire, just preach the word and apply it. Uh, but with, in light of the theme, <clears throat> an emphasis on the fact that God created it needs to be very clear in our hearts and minds in this generation that male and female created he them. And he created you either male or female. And that's under attack in our society today. It really is. And so many years ago, Herbert Brother Wayne do uh, what I referred to as the gender series. And, and many of you have maybe heard that. And I think this may be one of the first times, Brother Wayne, that you've done it as straight to youth. And so I asked him, if God leads you that way, then would you preach that? And so I, I believe that's what he's minded to do. And so that's the first time I've, I've taken that route. But do you understand why? Given the society in which we live. And we just, we, we want you to be equipped and helped. And, um, and so I, I believe that's what it's going to be. And so he's going to be very laser focused on that. And then Brother Jason Jett, you know, he's going to preach uh, just whatever God puts on his heart. And I trust it'll be from the Bible. But anyways, um, <laughs> I know it will be. But I'm excited about you getting to hear from these men. And I know they've studied and they've sought God. And listen, churches are praying. And you, you've come a long way. Many of you come a long way. And uh, we need to hear from the Lord. And so would you help me welcome Brother Wayne Hardy as he comes to preach here tonight. So Brother Wayne. Well, welcome to what's got to be the most exciting place on the planet right now. And one of the warmest places on the planet. I'm glad y'all finally stopped singing because you were heating it up with all that hot air in here. I'm glad you uh, slowed down a little bit. All preachers can probably equal that with the hot air, but we'll, we'll try not to make that the case tonight. So glad you're here. I want to say there's probably a number of you that come from some pretty tough environments, maybe a tough home situation. This might seem a strange environment to you. And I want you to know you're around a lot of people who love you. And you might look around and see, man, I don't know if these are, are my kind of people or not. We're, we're all the same kind of people. And, and what helps us is coming together at a time like this and letting God speak to our hearts and do something significant. And uh, I, I'm so glad to have our youth group back here. Amen. I've been gone for a month on a sabbatical and, and just really got back yesterday. And uh, you know, don't tell the rest of Bible Baptist Church, but those, that's my favorite part of Bible Baptist Church right back there. I have the privilege every Sunday afternoon from 4 to 5 o'clock to 
spend time with our ninth through 12th grade boys. We call them do right gang. That's not because they always do right, but that's what we're trying to get them to do is do right. And uh, we're in some ways, my favorite part of the week is to spend it with them because I, I love our young people so much and so good to see y'all again. And, uh, and I, I, I know that many of your pastors feel the same way. And so uh, I, I want to try to deal with this subject. And it, it's, a, it's a challenging one to deal with because there's a whole lot of stuff being said about gender these days. I want to say it biblically. I want to say it fairly. But you got to realize this is not a politically correct zone because this is not a political issue. It's a biblical issue. And there's a lot going around about politics, but we need to be sure that what we believe is true. You have to decide what you're going to believe is true, but that doesn't change what's true or not. What the Bible says is true. And so I want to try to come across this way as best I can and, and make it clear. And I'm going to ask you to be open-minded not open-minded like the world tells you to be. I want you to be open-minded to the Word of God. And I trust that you will allow that to happen. I'm going to ask you not to stand right now, but I want you to turn to do two different places in your Bible. Turn to the first chapter, Genesis chapter 1, and then turn to Romans chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 and Romans chapter 1. And I'm going I'm to beg you to pay attention and, and follow me. I'm not going to give you some kind of ear candy. You're going to have to follow the line of thought. I'll try to make it as clear as I can. We'll be at these texts. It'll be a little while before we get there. I want to pray. And then I want to start off with a, a narrative, a little bit of a story that you'll understand within just a few lines what it's talking about. And then I want to try to draw a progression that's taken place through America and how we got to where we are. And I hope that you'll pay attention. I know that you will, and I appreciate that. Let me pray, and we'll begin. Father, we're so grateful that we don't have to wonder what is true, that you give it to us in your word, and that by faith we can have great confidence in it. Or there's a lot of confusion, as Brother Gaddis has already said, about so many issues but this area really seems to be at the forefront of what's happening in our nation and in our culture. And I think the scripture is clear as to why that is. And I pray that we would not just see it as some political rumblings or just some people having some ideas and trying to promote it. I pray that we would have your mind and that we would be wise enough to see what really takes place because we understand your word and what you said. Lord, I, I want to be clear, and I, I ask you to help me make it that it's, that it's easy to grasp, even though there are so many voices, and that your voice would win out tonight. And then I pray that there would be no youth here tonight who would assume that this is completely clear in their mind, and they don't have to worry about it. The influence is so strong, and Satan is so deceiving. And some of the best young people that people would say, well, they're just the best that we have in five or ten years could be something completely different if this isn't clear in their mind. So I pray that, that even at invitation time, there would be a desire to be sure that we commit to your plan and your design in our life. I pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. During an 80-minute period of time, it took about 80 minutes on the morning of April 15th, 1912, four words were, were repeatedly hollered out in the midst of a freezing panic. These four words illustrated one of the richest expressions of gender that our country's ever known. Those four words, and what those four words represented led to hundreds of acts of valiant courage. Things that we cannot imagine that people would give themselves to, all because of what these four words represented. The scene was the deck of the Titanic, and the four words were these, women and children first. And what followed 
Those words were heroic acts of bravery that have been talked about ever since that time. Dan Marvin loaded his bride onto a lifeboat, blew her a kiss, and said, It's all right. You go, and I'll stay a while. Adolf Diker helped Mrs. Diker across the gunwale with a cheery, I'll see you later. Dr. Minahan told his wife, Honey, be brave. No matter what happens, be brave. Then he stepped back and joined the other men on the deck. Mr. Terrell Cavendish said nothing to his wife, just a kiss, a long look, another kiss, and then he disappeared into the crowd. Mark Fortune and his son Charles placed Mrs. Fortune and their three daughters onto a lifeboat and waved goodbye for the last time. Walter, you must come with me, begged Mrs. Douglas. No, Mr. Douglas replied, turning away. I must be a gentleman. Now, you need to understand this. Men who knew they were going to die not only placed their wives and their children on those few lifeboats, but insisted the same for women that they did not even know. Now, you need to grasp the importance of that. They didn't say, well, I'll give you my place on the lifeboat because I know you and I think you're worthy. They were deemed worthy for one reason, their gender. She was a woman. And a man decided... She deserves my place on the lifeboat, never having met her before. As a result of the 1,503 people who died on the accident of the Titanic, 1,503 died, 1,347 were men. 13 men to every woman died. Many men who were finally given permission to board the lifeboats refused simply because they were convinced there were still women below who were trying to get up to the top to get those places. And so some of the places in the lifeboats went unfilled. And so many stories dictate that was the reason why. A little bit later when they were dealing with some of the aftermath of the Titanic, one of the surviving ship's officers was asked if women and children first was a law of the captain or the law of the sea. And he responded, sir, women and children first is a law of nature, meaning a law of God, that that's just the way things are supposed to be. That was 1912. 1994, a different ship, the Estonia. The Estonia broke up and 852 died on the breakup of the Estonia. One survivor called it the law of the jungle as she watched a lady with two broken legs beg a man passing by for his life jacket. Other survivor quotes were these, hey, it's survival of the fittest. This time, 90% of the survivors were men because it was survival of the fittest. Roger Cohen of the International Maritime Organization said when he was asked a similar question decades later at the time of this breaking up, his quote is this, there is no law that says women and children first. That is something from the age of chivalry. These two incidents demonstrate a significant change in what we respect or disrespect in the area of gender and the value that we place on male and female. What happened between 1912 and certainly was happening before them between 1912 and 1994 is just one piece 
of a transformation that we are told in the Bible will take place when people do not keep God at the forefront of what they believe and what they see and if they lose sight of the fact that He created them in a particular way. And it was a transformation that God informed us would be part of our destruction. 1994, now let's look at 2023. I want to see if you can sense a war on gender in our country and in this culture. Men are being allowed in women's locker rooms simply because they identify more with a woman than with a man. There's amazing stories coming out. It seems like there are stories almost every day, certainly every week, that there, there are one from a few weeks ago from the, the YMCA where there was a lady in the locker room just happened to notice there's a man over there in the locker room as well and, and in various stages of dress. And she goes and she complains. She says, listen, this is our, the women's locker room. And she's chastised by the, the YMCA officials because they said, we have to honor what one believes his gender identity is. And so you're going to have to live with it. Now imagine what that would have been a hundred years ago. That would have been unspeakable. And yet now the one is protected is the one who it's not really his locker room, but because he identifies himself more with a woman, then he gets to use that locker room and the true woman has to live with it. In public schools across America, students are given the freedom to go into whatever bathroom or locker room they identify with. When it comes to language, people are being fired and potentially charged with crimes because they won't use the pronouns that somebody desires. They're used to saying that that's a male, so that's he, that's him. This is a female, this is she, this is her. And yet there are some who say, I'm, I'm not that, I'm the opposite. And so you have to try to correct it in your mind to say, All right, I know that looks like a male, but I have to say she because that's what he wants to be referred to as. And then some of them, they don't want to claim a gender, so it's they or it's them. And, and then if you end up using the wrong pronouns, then you can go through some indoctrination if you want to be able to keep your job as long as you will promise to call them what they want to be called. I've been in three different Starbucks recently where if you'll look on their board, they have the names of their baristas, their employees, and at the bottom it will list their preferred pronoun. And they desire that you will call them by their preferred pronoun. This past April the 25th, local officials in Wisconsin accused three eighth grade boys of sexual harassment and launched a Title IX investigation for something called mispronouning. These children, eighth graders, said they used her to refer to a classmate who wants to be called them, and they just, they just couldn't get that right in their mind. And so they were accused of sexual harassment according to an American law and brought up charges in, in their age. Biological males are being allowed to compete in women's sports if they say they've transitioned to being a woman. Even though their basic biology cannot change and does not change, there is a strong movement against sports teams even for boys or girls. Companies like Target and Toys R Us have eliminated any advertising or signage concerning the gender a toy is for. You cannot find that there anymore. Schools are eliminating homecoming king and queen in favor of royalty. Pregnant women are now being re requiring many hospitals are required to call pregnant women birthing individuals so that there's not a discrimination against men and because they believe that they ought to be able to have the idea of birthing even though it's not biologically possible. Many schools are helping kids transition to another gender without even telling the parents. The medical field is heavily promoting surgeries to help transition a boy to a girl or a girl to a boy. All kinds of medicine being prescribed to stop the body from doing what it was designed to do. These are realities in our country now. Children as young as four are being allowed to decide they are a different gender and getting surgeries to support that at age four. 
the idea of two genders is long past. I want you to, if they can bring it up on the screen, I want you to see a current list of gender identities. And you you may not be able to read these. I I know it's small. I have it on my phone. I'll I'll read you some of these. Now, maybe you can see some. This is currently, in America, the accepted number of gender identities. And so if if you have have a a form, you are legally you're legally protected by using one of these abinary, agender, ambigender, and androgyne, androgynous, uh, a porogender, autogender, bakla, bigender, binary. It, it goes on and on and on. There's third gender, there's trans, trans female, trans man, trans person. There's tum tum, if you want to be tum tum. <laughs> Any tum tums? Yeah. What's that boy right there? <laughs> Two spirit. I can't even pronounce some of them. Thank you. You can you can take that down. Do you sense, young people, that there's just almost seems like a war on the the clarity of gender of there being a man and a woman and what we valued in 2012 that began to slip over years and and decades and now we come to a time where it it is it's it, it's almost almost laughable if it wasn't so serious what actually is taking place. You even go into churches and you find whole denominations are are redefining what the role of a man and a woman is and that you don't even have to be a particular gender to be a a pastor or a priest or a, a bishop in certain areas. And you have to wonder with how prominent this is and how widespread it is, what's actually happening? What's taking place? I mean, is, is this just some strange phenomena of, of history? Is this just something that's, that's unique to the United States of America? Why is there such a passionate war on gender? Well, I want you to notice something. I want you to notice in Genesis chapter 1. Let's just read a couple verses here, and then we're going to go to Romans 1. And then I want to illustrate this in a way, and it's going to build the foundation tonight, and then we'll build on that foundation tomorrow night and, and Thursday morning. So Genesis chapter 1, notice verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now that's pretty phenomenal right there. No, no other, no animal has that. No mountain, no ocean, no galaxy has that. Human beings are created after God's image. He said, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, but he's not done. When he's talking about being created in the image of God, he completes that thought by saying, male and female created he them. The thought has to come together. That you are created in the image of God, not just as a human being. You are created in the image of God to bear that image as a male or as a female. You cannot bear the image of God just as a human being or as something else that God did not create. You live the image of God as a male or as a female. Now go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. There's, there's a, a lot to unpack in this chapter. We're not going to deal with as much of it tonight. We'll probably deal with a little bit more tomorrow night. But one of the things that you would find if you started somewhere maybe around verse 18 and verse 19, you find a process that, that God gives through inspiration of the Holy Spirit to Paul in, in writing in this, this letter. And, and he explains that there's this process that takes place that starts when people begin to not recognize God as God. They, they don't see Him as the Creator. That, that evolution would, would bring into people's minds that this is not, this, this galaxy is not evidence that there is a God. It's just chance. It's just evolution. And when people begin to lose sight of the fact that God is a Creator, is the Creator, th- there, are, there are pieces that come after that, and then another piece comes, and then another piece peace comes and he covers what those are. But what's interesting is when he starts to get to the end of this process, 
What happens in this culture or this community or in this nature, uh, th this nation or, or in this, this uh, social gathering of people, then we find that after a lot of this takes place, look at verse 21. We'll, we'll begin here. He says, because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Notice, wherefore, notice the terminology here, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own bodies to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. So something happened, happening physically here that between themselves there's some things that God said this ought not be but is now starting to take place. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator. So meaning that something that God set up, they said that's not really the way that it is. What the Creator said and what, what He created, that's not exactly how we see it. What the creature says it is, is the way it ought to be. So now the creature gets to decide instead of the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. So verse 26 brings us to a particular characteristic of this ending. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly or unnatural, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And then he goes on and gives a, a list of things that go with that. But he spends some extra time saying, you're going to know that we are a very long ways down this road when it happens to gender. That's right. yeah. so you're, you're going to see lots of effects, and the, and the list covers a lot of things. But he says, let me tell you some very clear evidences that we're towards the end of this process. In this process, men are going to decide, we don't think gender matters. It, it, it's not as important a, as it, it seems to be. In, in Genesis 1, gender is up to God. In Romans 1, gender is up to man. Yeah. And man gets to decide. Now, I want to illustrate this particular way. Um, I'm going to ask my son and daughter-in-law to come, Daniel and Sarah, if y'all will come. And, uh, and, and so I, I, needed, I needed manly man and girly girl in this case. And, uh, but this happened to be Hawaiian night. So Brother Daniel said, Dad, do I need to come on up here? D he said, do, you, do I need to change shirts so I don't you know, look quite so feminine? And I said, no, as long as you're willing to strike a manly pose. So give us a manly pose. <laughs> Check that out, man. He's, he's got some guns there, huh? Yeah, I like that. All right, all right, good. So, so here, here's, here's what I want to do. Um, Daniel, you come over here. Y'all have done this before. Maybe just stand on that, on the black part right there. Sierra, if you'll go to the same one over there. And so, I, I, want, I want to demonstrate this as, this is what God intended, Genesis chapter 1. All right, He created them male and female. And, and it's clear that He has a, a difference in mind there. That both of them demonstrate and can give evidence of the image of God, but a man does it in unique ways different than a woman does it. And you might think, well, like, how is, I mean, God is referred to as, you know, as, as He, so how, how can a, a woman do that? That's one of the mysteries of God, but there are elements of how God made a woman that we'll talk about tomorrow night that gives her the ability to, to demonstrate the image of God in her own way just as accurately as a man does. The attributes of God are so many that it's as if he says, I, I'm going to have a, a male who can demonstrate these attributes in a great way, and I'm going to have female, she can demonstrate these attributes in a great way. And, and so God gives them both the ability to live in his image according to their gender, male and female. We could say masculinity and femininity. All right, so, 
So there's a, there's a complete, there's a, it's like a battery. There's, there's a, a polarity there. There's polar opposites. But then when we get to Romans chapter 1, then we find that something else is at play. It's completely different. So both of you come here to the middle again if you would. And uh, Daniel, if you'll stand there, see if you'll stand in front of him. All right, so this is Romans chapter 1 where there's, there is no difference. It doesn't matter. Gender is irrelevant. It doesn't have to be a man and a woman. I'm not trying to be crude, but it says a, a woman can, it can change against nature. It can be a woman with a woman, what we would term in our culture lesbianism, or it could be a man with a man, homosexuality. And in Romans chapter 1, because they, they turned the truth of God into a lie, then now there's, there's no real difference between them. Man gets to say what gender is, and if he wants to come up with 90 different forms of gender, then he can do that because it's up to the creature now. It's not up to the creator. So we're going to call this Romans 1. And so we'll say this is zero importance of gender. Now let, let me clarify. We, we're going to have a, a scale up here and it's, it's subjective what the scale is. But the scale can represent two things. It could represent distinction. It could also represent importance. How important the genders are. All right, so now go back to Genesis 1, if you would. So they're going to go to the Genesis 1 position. And I, I want you to notice what, what happens here. So I'm going to have them do something. It's not going to seem very profound, but I, I want you to watch. So I want you all to slowly go from Genesis 1 to Romans 1. So just watch. Go ahead. Isn't that amazing? It's just profound, isn't it? <laughs> I, I, can, I can see you're, you're just thrilled. All right. They went from Genesis 1 to Romans 1. And did they do that in one giant leap? How'd they get there? They took steps. They took steps. They started here in Genesis 1. And then somehow over time, they ended up at Romans 1. And you don't, you don't get there in, in a year or five years or ten years or even a hundred years. Go, go back to Genesis 1, if you would. W what happens is, is you, have, you have the way that God created us. And in, even in the United States of America, with all of its problems, even early on, there was a, we had the biblical evidence of, of gender in our culture. And that there was male and there was female. There was no idea that there would be anything else than that. And, and the, America wasn't a totally Christian nation, but it was Christianized. And, and so much of it was based on, on biblical teaching and biblical truth, and certainly in the area of gender. And so in the early stages of America, it'd be clear, you know, a man was a man and a woman was a woman. And yet over time, there would be little changes made that would mean one step. So come this way, just one step. And we don't necessarily have to get into what all of those would be at this, at this point in time. But in that, then all of a sudden we've kind of taken a step away. And, and now culture says, all right, well, this is what a, a man is. And, but it maybe it's like 95% now or, or 90%. And it's not quite as important as it used to be. And then the woman takes a, a step from, from her direction and, and ends up, who knows what that might have been, and any number of things that, that now we don't, we, we're not at 100% of importance of gender or distinction of gender. And there, and there was another step taken from the, the woman, and, and now we're getting, we're getting closer here. And by the way, the, the woman is not looking at Romans 1 saying, oh, that's where I want to go. No, the woman is looking at the man's position and saying, I want that. And so as she's, as she's seeing him, she wants his authority. She wants his pay. She, she thinks, okay, well, well, my value is going to primarily be in, in money, although the Bible says, no, your value when you are a woman is far above rubies. It has nothing to do with money. Don't turn yourself into money value. But she, she buys into that lie and she looks at him. And so she takes another step towards his position. And then before long, this is not her intent, but in a culture, we keep taking steps and more steps. And then men take more steps. And actually, you know, the way the, the men take steps oftentimes turn the other way. 
You know, it, it, it's not that he's looking back there and saying, I, 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 want, I want what she has. No, he is shying away from God, what God wants him to be as a man and the leadership that he's supposed to provide. And it's just like, man, I don't know. I don't know how to handle these kids. Let her take care of them. And he's taking a step back from what God's version of masculinity and a man is. And so it's not like he's saying, I mean, he might even be tough. He's not saying, I want to be over there in, in the areas of homosexuality. That's not what he's saying. But as a culture, that's where we've ended up. And go ahead and take some more steps back. And every one of these, early on, hold on right there. Early on, this, this step might have taken 50 years. The next step might have taken 40 years. But while we're down here, and we've taken so many steps in the last five years to where we have, we have gone from being able to see our, a clarity of what God intended in, in masculinity and femininity and the, the gender of male and the gender of female. And we have so allowed it to be blurred. Thank you all very much. You, you, can, you can be seated. So many steps have been taken. And now a lot of big steps in very little time. Now you need to see why gender is such a big deal. Please see it, young people. You know, we, we, need, to be, we need to be grateful that we're Americans. I'm, I'm still, I know we got a lot of problems, but I'm thankful to be an American. You want to know, you know, one of the main reasons, this, this is a heartbeat of Brother Gaddis, certainly very clear. One of the reasons I'm thankful to be an American is because we are a, a missions country. We send most of the missionaries from the United States of America to all these other countries who are godless. They, they, don't, they don't have the clarity of knowing who God is. And so the United States of America sends missionaries to them so they can know our God because we still get to have churches like you attend. We get to have Bible colleges like Heartland where the gospel is declared and, and you know God and you, many of you grow up in homes and you get to know God and, and that's a blessing to you. And, and many of these other nations, some of them they knew God at one time but they got rid of Him. And I get to be an, an American who is part of the mission sending agency? But what is happening with gender right now makes it clear that we are quickly becoming one of these other countries. We're going down the same path. And, and if, if we don't stop and, and recognize, wait a minute, there's something particular about gender that we don't need to mess with because otherwise when it says God gave them up in one verse, in verse 24, God gave them up in verse 26, in verse 28, God gave them over. He, he's trying to say, listen, th this is a ticking time bomb that you can become a culture that I do not have the same connection with that I did for so much of your storied history as the great and grand United States of America. And he says the one thing that has some of the greatest potential to bring you down is if you don't pay attention to what's happening to you being created in my image as a gender. And you fall for that. Do you know what group in America is changing at a rate three times the rest of the population? Age 13 to 17. When it comes to trans, current statistics, 0.5% of 18 years old and older identify as trans. When it comes to 13 to 17 year olds, it's doubled in the last four years and it's now 1.6%. Your group is falling for a lie. Your friends. They're, they're, I would have to think in a, in a group this size, there would be some males, some females who are struggling with the very things we're talking about. And I, I want to tell you, you're at the right place. You're thinking, man, you're just blasting away at all of that stuff. I'm not blasting away at you. I'm, I'm trying to, to declare with a passion 
what God said and what God offers you. Because I want to talk to you tomorrow night about even the greater yes of this aspect that God offers and, and some freedom that he offers through some of that. But the fact is we have to be abundantly clear because you, this group that is here assembled right now, you, you are susceptible somehow to accepting so much of what is coming out and at a rate that is unknown in American history, maybe in world history, certainly in American history, you are changing at a rate that no other group is falling for. And it is imperative that you leave this conference, maybe even in invitation time tonight, being willing to say, God, I, I think I've, I've got this right, but I don't want to fall for this because so many of my friends are. So much of social media is portraying it as the latest, greatest trend, and that it comes without any major consequences. When instead the Bible says it's dangerous. Now, you know, because your group is part of the problem, you know what that also says? You're part of the solution. We need you. Young people, I'm telling you, as a 60 year old adult, we need you. They may not listen to me as much. I hope they will. I hope they'll listen to your youth director and your pastor. But I'm telling you, you, you are in their age group. And if you can have it very clear in your mind, listen, I am so thankful that I know God made me a male. I was born a male. And that's what God says that I can bear his image in. And that you young ladies, you're like, I'm so thankful that God made me a female. And, and I want to live the image of God. And that I'm going to be grateful for that. I'm going to be thankful that I that I. I'm clear on that, and I want to be the, the best young lady that God wants me to be and will let me be. I want to be the best young man that God will let me be, and I want to know what the Bible says about how to be masculine and what the Bible says about how to be feminine. And, and you can be a missionary. You can be a light to the young people around you in all of that. By seeing your gender as divine, a divine gift from God. And embracing the gender God created you as. You know, young people today need to be able to come into a youth group, into your youth group, and see young men and young ladies that are really clear. We know what God made us, and we delight in it. We're, we're, we're not confused about it. We don't have an attitude about it. And, and they can find an openness where they say, man, they, these folks, are they're, they're accepting, they're clear on, on who they are, but they are accepting, and they can come in and they can see young men who are men and young ladies who are ladies and find it refreshing. Can I ask you, where else are they going to see that these days? Public schools aren't going to show them. They're not seeing it on social media. Hollywood's not giving it to them. They have basically one place left. That's your youth group. They need you. Young people, we need you. Be a youth group that shows other youth how important our God-given gender is. We're going to get into more details tomorrow night. But would you be willing to commit or recommit tonight to be sure that every step that you're taking is in the direction of being sure that God has some young people to represent the gender he created them in. And that you would, you would be very mindful, all right, before I take this step in my life, I'm going to ask myself, is it a step in this direction? Or is it a step in this direction? And give God an opportunity to lead and guide you in all of those all of those little things in your life that have that have the capacity to let other people know God created us either male or female and we are going to enjoy it would you stand with me tonight for a time of invitation i know this is a different this is a different appeal and th this is not even primarily for somebody to say, you know, I've been really confused about this. I, if, if God's dealing with you already, I hope that's exactly that you'll, you'll let the Lord speak to you about that. But, but what I'm asking tonight is that young men, young ladies from, from good churches, so many of you good families, would you just take some time and say, Lord, I'm, I'm just reminded tonight how important gender is. And I hear a bunch of stuff out there 
but I want to hear what you have to say to me about being a young man or a young lady. Would you be willing to just take some time and commit tonight to the Lord and say, Lord, help me this week through, through the rest of the preaching on gender and, and Brother Jet's preaching. Lord, help me to really be clear and to commit that I'm going to be the young man, the young lady that you want me to be. And then promise, promise the Lord, Lord, I want to be a light in my community. I want to be a light in my school. It's not an admission for you to spend some time with the Lord talking about this. It's not an admission. Oh, I'm, I'm really struggling with all this stuff. No, I'm, I'm asking you to commit to being the light. Father, I, I know the subject matter is challenging. And, and I, I think sometimes maybe so specific and targeted that it takes a little while to know what to do with it. And yet, Lord, your image is at stake. And, Lord, I, I would imagine many youth directors, youth directors' wives, pastors, pastors' wives in, in this room are already dealing with young people that are struggling with what to think about this issue and struggling with the emotions and all the things that others say. Lord, would you have your way in our hearts tonight? Lord, I pray that we would have some solid young men and young ladies who... Sure, they're going to be willing to be involved in full-time service, and they need to pray about whether you want them at Bible college or not, and all of those things. And yet, all of that can be for naught if we don't accept before anything else we're created in your image as a man or as a woman. Lord, I pray somehow that you would take the words spoken tonight and our young people would see the importance of being sure that this is absolutely abundantly clear in our hearts and minds. Lord, speak to them. May they speak to you. I pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Would you respond however God has dealt in your heart? Give him an opportunity to solidify this in your heart and your mind. However God speaks to you, would you respond to this invitation time tonight? seeing young people respond here to the invitation tonight. If you still need to respond, we're going to have more verses here. You know, when the fall of sin happened, it, the, the epicenter of it and the effects of it, it were, they showed up very quickly in the realm of gender. God said there's going to be certain things that a man's going to struggle with and things that a lady will struggle with. It may be tonight that you just ought to come to the altar and say, God, I want to be the man that you made me to be. You know, I think our churches are hurting because men aren't. 
And I don't want to get on ground that Brother Wayne, I know he's going to preach on. The groundwork's got to be laid to that, but I, I really think that a lot of times families and churches are hurting because as men, we're backpedaling. Isn't that right? It's refreshing to see that some of the first ones down the aisle tonight were some young men. That's good. That's good. And then for ladies to be willing to be where God wants you to be and not be pulled into the whole entrapment, it's going to take some courage which means you got to have the Lord's help right here. So, um, let's see, lead us in another verse. God's dealing with your heart. Won't you come? Let's not get in a hurry here tonight. We've got time. So just make up your mind. It'd be best. This is, this is what this is all about. This is equipping. It's equipping you to stand in your generation, trying to meet a need right here. And it's, it's not so much just about the transgender issue. That just, that just illustrates the situation that we're in to zero importance. But right now we're looking at the steps. What steps are you taking? So clear, so clear. Let's sing another verse for there, Brother Stephen, if you'll lead us. All to Jesus I surrender, Lord, I give myself to Thee. Fill me with Thy love and power. Let Thy blessings fall. seated there quietly so i'm still praying let's give opportunity just continue to play and uh, then we'll have a few announcements and we'll be dismissed that message here this evening. Good start to the conference. I want to give you a few announcements. For all those who haven't registered, if you would do so in the middle information desk back there in the foyer. Um, also at that foyer, same foyer, if you'd like to know any more information about Heartland, they'd be happy to uh, answer any questions that you might have regarding the school. Uh, so feel free, if, you, if the Lord's working in your heart about school, about Bible college, feel free to go to the foyer and, and ask some questions. Um, so tomorrow morning, uh, 9.30 sharp, we're going to have game time in here. You're not going to want to miss it. About a half an hour's worth before we go to the split sessions, but you're going to want to come in here, get an opportunity to uh, play some games, win some gift cards, and have a good amount of fun. So be here at 9.30 in the morning. 
Also, the split sessions will start at 10 a.m. Make sure you check your booklet for which uh, split session you're supposed to go to and the location. So uh, please do that. Also, we've got some activities tonight, starting at 10 a. Uh, some, sorry, 10 p.m. tonight, not a.m. No way. 10 p.m. Uh, ladies, Hurricane Harbor tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, main event. Yeah. It's the difference between men and women right there, right? <laughs> Fulfilling your role. Well done. So ladies, when you, uh, when you exit the building, there, you're gonna go into the side uh, of the cafeteria building through the perk, and you're gonna have a, a snack bag in there. So there'll be some men out there that will direct you where to go. So go into the, uh, the cafeteria through the side door. They'll direct you there. Grab your snack bag and then go out the center doors. Uh, guys, when you get to main event, uh, main event, you're gonna get pizza. So Brother Seth made that clear here today. Pizza, that's right. Or a cookie, right? Or a cookie, and, of, and a cookie, or a cookie. I don't know how that works. Now, here's the, here's the deal: no ticket, no pizza, no ticket, no pizza. Uh, so for for those, the the food is for those who have registered. So you got you got to register. If you need more tickets. At both events, there's gonna be people out uh, in front of the doors there at the activity that you can buy tickets from, or you can buy some extra tickets there in the back um, in the foyer as well too. Also, uh, when uh, those who are driving will have both exits open. So there'll be a north exit back over this way. So if you're parked over here or in the chapel, feel free to come out this way, right behind the chapel, and you can go out that north gate. And for the others, you, the, uh, the normal entrance, you can go out that way. We would ask that uh, when you come to that exit that you would just turn right because it'll get bogged down if you try to take a left and then people will be honking, there'll be fights and that's not gonna be good. So take a right if you would. Also, there are some that are parking on the basketball court, uh, the outdoor basketball court, and that's fine. You can, you can do that, but there's also somebody that's blocking everybody from getting out. <laughs> so it, unless you want slash tires, keyed car, all that fun stuff, please go out there right away and move that uh, before uh, your car is damaged, okay? <laughs> so let's have a word of prayer. Sure, I'm thankful for what the Lord's done even at this first uh, session and uh, looking forward to the rest of the week. So let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for what we heard here this morning. And Lord, in, in some big ways and some small ways, we all need to heed to this. So sure, I'm looking forward to what you have, uh, uh, particularly for this uh, gender series and then what Brother Jet has for us. Lord, I do ask that you'd use this in our lives to change us, but then, Lord, to be an effective witness and challenge those around us that are struggling with this sort of thing, Lord. So we ask for your blessing upon um, the evening and upon the rest of the conference. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You all are dismissed. Amen.